Hi everyone. Hello. <laughs> um, is it okay if I like also like join on my iPad so I can like work through the problems? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. That's, that's part okay. of the fun. Uh, join. It's an adventure. Um, how do I do that? All right, we have Alex and we have Jose. And I think we have Jeff, so uh, I think we can start. Okay, sounds good. Um, I'm just going to pull up, um, pull it up on my iPad. If, okay, it's, um, Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so how do I I guess hmm, how do I do this? Can we you can't share two screens at a time on on this, right? What's that? I said, can you share, like, never mind, never mind. Okay, I'm going to please that one screen. Uh, okay, is it on my screen? Yep. Oh, can you see my iPad screen? Yep, I see it. Okay. Um, so I'll quickly pull Problem we're doing. Um, 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 and then we said how long it was from four to okay. Um, I'll just screenshot it and then we go on here. Uh, um, okay. okay. So which problem is so I can which problem is it? So I can post it to the chat so people have that link. For uh problem fourteen. Problem fourteen. Okay. I guess we can start solving it now. Um, Alright, so the following iterative sequence is defined for the set of positive integers. Um, using the rule above and starting with 13, we generate the following sequence. Okay, it can be seen that the sequence starting at 13 and finishing at 1 contains 10 terms. Although it has not been proved yet, um, it is thought that all certain numbers finish at 1, which starting number under 1 million produces the longest chain. Um, so, well, let's see. I mean, we could, if we wanted to, we could, like, I was thinking kind of like an iterative problem, doing like a code for it and just like working through it first and then putting it in the computer. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, so, I forgot how to do these. <laughs> uh, so the rule we have that it's, I'll just highlight it. No, we want that, we want that. Is 
So you can have like so F, oh no, I don't like this color, I'm sorry. No. Um, so we can have def and then um the function will call it call um call and it's just takes in num um and then if num F num. Well, how do you do even numbers? Oh, if n, if num. Good question. So you mean Python, right? So yeah. Usually in languages, there's a function called um called mod. Let me find a link and uh, I'll put it up so people can see it. This link. So let me bring up the browser window. Um. Oh, if if num if ah, I think we could just do if num is um two. That's a percent sign, by the way. Yeah, so in languages, um, yep, so that is uh, the mod function. Yeah. That mm -hmm. takes, like, the remainder, right? Good question. <laughs> it's something, I remember, it was, uh, I think it's this one, right? To check if it's, like, on. Yeah, so, so it, it is the mod function. Um, which stands yeah. for modulo. Um, modulo. Yes. So it's a fancy word, but I don't remember the the actual definition. We'll just say it takes rem reminders <laughs> for now. Um. So if now modulo two equals equals zero, yeah. Then we do num. Oh shoot, what did I do? Um, so, so the official definition while you do that, just for everyone, uh -huh. is modulo operation finds remainder finds the remainder or the sign remainder of a division is what it does. Okay. okay. So if not if no modulo okay. Then Mm -hmm. equals mm -hmm. two L F uh, oh what okay. Elif num modulo two. So when you do the does not equal, is it like this or is this on the other side? 
They should be exclamation equal. Exclamation equal. Okay, I always get that one messed up. <laughs> um, zero. Then we do num equals three and three and plus one. Okay. I feel like I'm missing something. Okay, so now, I mean, it says that for, although it has not been proven yet, um, that all numbers end up being one or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, we can do um, if it's neither of those, else I don't know. It has to be. No. I'm gonna just do it in an LF, whatever. LF um num equal equals one. Um LF num equals equals one and then oh wait, I know what I'm forgetting. The return statement. This is a recursive function. What <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Yep. I'll just move this. Um, so we're going to return num. I'm so done. Um, Um, so I asked everyone if that made sense, and the answers were kind of yes, a little, okay, and so sort of. <laughs> so, uh, okay. so wait, what, what part doesn't make sense? So, I guess it's the question. Do you want to explain what it means to get the remainder? The modulo? Yeah. Um, sure. Okay, so when I think of modulo, I usually go back to like kinder not kindergarten because we weren't doing division, but like third grade. Um when we had to do like the divisions the long way or whatnot, and then we had to put in the remainder, like um I guess um I guess I'll just draw it off. Yeah. So let's add 27 and divided by 2, right? And then you found out that it was how many numbers fit in 27? Um, so wait. So 1 and then 3 and then you had minus 26 and then that was 1. So your remain it's like saying this. This is what your module is. What is left over of the division problem? That is not a whole thing, a whole fraction. I don't know if that even makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask everyone and see. <laughs> okay. So it's just taking, um, seeing what seeing the remainder of the division problem. Okay, so what happens if you do it with 22? With 22, then the remainder would be um, zero because two goes into 22 11 times, so there's no remainder there. Right. I mean, 11 times. I did say 11, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's checking that are how many pieces are like remaining that didn't fit into the group of in this case two right did that make sense everyone I just asked we'll see what uh, people respond with <laughs> <sighs> okay so Alex says, yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. okay. So go ahead. 
um, where was that? So it LF not equals equals one. And we're just gonna return return. Also, I guess my question would be for the group. Like, does does the term iterative make sense or like? Because I call the iterative um an iterative uh, function that I'm doing. I just wanted to know if people needed clarification on that. Well, go ahead. Uh, iterative, recursive, recursive. <laughs> I am sorry, y'all. It's okay. Uh, it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think we did cover recursive uh, a couple of weeks back. Uh, okay. So basically, a recursive function just it's a function that calls itself until it's done, yeah. and then it ends. All right. Yes, everyone said yes. The remainder explanation helped. Okay. Wait. So it's, it calls itself. So I did something wrong. We have to call the function instead. Okay. Why am I screwed? We have to call our function in our code, and we haven't done that. Yep. It's fine. It's a Friday okay. and it's the afternoon, so. <laughs> yeah. So, be patient with me. Cause yeah, no, it's usually around three or four. My brain just it <laughs> takes a big old fart and I'm just like, I can't think. <laughs> so, it happens, everyone. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So, um, let's see. So def call so if num num equals and then we in our return statement is where we're gonna call the function that we're defining basically. Um, so rather than returning num, we're gonna return call num. Yep. Could I just call it a new variable because it's just, I'm going to just call it something else. I usually do, just to avoid confusion. Yeah. But that's, that's just more of like, someone's going to have to maintain this code, and so I try my best to make it clear and have good variable names that are descriptive. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe because like I don't want the person that comes next after me to go, What in the world did Peter do? Or why he why is it a doofus? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and then I go, Yeah, that's probably a bad idea to need variables. Yeah. Okay, so we're just gonna Okay, so let's yeah, yeah and, and it's fair, too, because there, there have been plenty of times where, at work, I had to go and fix bugs or improve things that someone else wrote, and if they didn't document it correctly, I'm just like, ah, oh, why couldn't they have spent a couple of minutes? <laughs> it, it'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> And then this one is when they just return a one. Yeah. Um, cause yes, cause this is like, this is what's gonna trigger this right here is what's gonna trigger your thing to like give you something. Oh, okay. Um, so I think we have it. Okay, now you can try to implement it. We can, we're gonna try it on my computer. I'm gonna stop shooting my iPad. All right. Um, how do you? How do I stop? Okay. So my screen is sharing now, right? Um. Well, let's see if. Okay. We're just gonna do a no file. Mm -hmm. Project Euler. Um, let me just quickly run it. So that's call 
No. in some print statements so we can see what good idea is so uh, I'll put some to see what um Should I put on, like? No, I should put print. Uh, I'm gonna just put it print new. See which one. I guess, well, I think that's, that's that. Okay. Let's, okay. What did I do wrong? Oh. Three, no. I put no. What? Oh. Okay. There we go. Uh, let's put in 13. Oh. Oh, okay. There's an error. Um, it says int object is not. Oh. Um, it's supposed to go. Int object is not callable. What does that mean? Oh. New equals three num. So, um. so it should be three times, right? Three times the num? Yeah. Three times the num, yeah. Maybe we can make... Yep, so if you just give it the parens and put a multiply, right? After the three. Okay. Why does it do so many numbers? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> um, so we see that it goes. I mean, it stopped. So, it's still going. <laughs> <laughs> so they said it's supposed to go to. So it's th it starts at thirteen. Let's just put on okay. her. Okay. Uh, I'm supposed to go to. Yep. 
So 13, 40, 20, 40, 10, 20, 5, and yeah. 6, 8, 4, 2, and then it goes, and why doesn't it stop at 1? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Is it because I put all those prints in it? Or like, but I mean, it, it does, for yeah. majority of Okay. Yes. Hmm. And it just repeats one, four, two, one, four, two, one, four, two. <sighs> Good question. So there's something in your code that's not stopping. Hmm. Just going on and on. Hmm. What if you put a else, a final else with a break or an end or something? Would that fix it? An else? Mm -hmm. And then just put what? Just, so how would you stop it from continuing? If it's one, just stop. <laughs> Return one and end and break. Uh, else. So if you do else return one, would that do it? What do you think? Else return. Let's see what happens. Return one. Nope. Nope. Okay. It just repeats one one and then four four two two. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Let let's see. Um, maybe we can. Okay. Maybe we might want to put the prince demons more. Oh, shoot! What did it do? Um. And then print. We maybe maybe let's see what it's calling. Okay. Yep. That might be um, good. Oh, it's not letting me type. What the heck? Okay, it's letting me type here, but it's not. Oh, it's it's okay. probably still running. You click the stop button. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's like I running. Probably did that before. I meant to. Okay. Um. Um, print new, and I'm going to also put print, maybe, call, and then, I don't know, uh -huh. and then no, no, okay, I'm just going to put that. I'm going to put that here. Um, maybe we can... I don't know where to put the... Or maybe we should... Actually, never mind. Let's... Instead of putting it here, we can just... I'm just going to put it here and see what okay. happens. Ah! Oh, wait. I would put a num, not no. There you go. Okay, so let's do... Um, uh -huh. it's called one. Right, so it's not stopping at one, right? It's... I don't understand why it keeps calling one if I'm returning a one and it should. Oh, wait, so lf num equals equals 
one, then uh, why am I struggling? So think about that for a minute, right? So when it's when it's odd, what is the remainder, and what, what's the value when it's even? Wait, what? Okay. <laughs> so we're doing the, the modulo, oh. right, to figure out if it's odd or uh -huh. even, and our values that are possible is 0 and 1. Yeah, yeah. Do you, still, you see a problem there? Oh, <laughs> I do. So now, so many people. now he, he, here's a tip. What if you move else if num equals to 1 to the top of that? What if instead, though, instead, what if it equals, okay, yeah. Um, no, but then, but it's like the remainder is like 3. Or, no, we know, we're checking odd or even, my bad, right. my bad. Yep. Both equals one. Let's see. Does it stop? Nope. <laughs> it keeps repeating. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Maybe. Hit, yep, so hit the stop so it stops running. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to keep running. Um, let me try something. Okay. You got it. You'll figure it out. It's nice. Maybe let's just try if that is greater than zero. No, it keeps running. Um. So here's a question for you. When one is passed in, uh -huh. and we divide by, we do modulo two, what do you get? We get point 0.5. Right? Zero point five. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's, that's your hint. Okay. Um. Mm. Right. So the part. So where I think of it is, what are the possible states? If you pass an odd number. Okay. We get remainder one. We pass an even number, we get zero. Zero. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when it's one, we get some other uh, value. Oh, yeah. Right. Which means that else of equals to one. Does that ever happen? Um. And the, the follow-up question is, what if you were to move that line up to above equals to zero? What would that do? Which one? So that the second else if. If you move that above to make it the if and then make the first one an else if, what would that do? What do you think? Um, I don't know. So wait, you're talking about making this an if statement, not an elif? Right, so move it to, to the top of that if oh, okay. else if. And that, then, uh, I see what you're at. Okay, I see. Yep. Okay. So if, now just copy this. I'm going to delete this. Run it. Right. Okay. okay. Oh, because it's the base case. Oh, oh my, I'm done. I'm done. It's been too long. All right, so now change the second if to an LF right, so that it'll work. Um, and we'll see if that works. Oh, it still works. Because well, our thing and still ends up being one. Okay, that works. So, so, does that make sense? I mean, if we want... Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yep. The the first if statement that we have, it's like 
the base case of the whole thing, right? Exactly. That'll make actually get an answer, which in this case is one. Yep. Yeah. So basically, um, we we change a lot to, to to say, all right, is it done? If it's done, just return. If not, then keep doing the thing. Yeah. Keep calling yourself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good job. Let me see if other people have questions. All right. Let's see. Let me see if everyone got it to work. All right, let's see what people say. Okay, so Nelly's computer is really old and <laughs> giving her prompts. <laughs> See if Alex knows they got to work. Yep, so Alex got it to work. Okay. All right, so if you want, you can move on to the next prompt. If you want to try the second one that you're thinking of. Okay. Let's see. I'll switch over to my iPad. Okay. Hold on. Okay, can you see my iPad? Yep, it's coming up. Okay. Let me, it. Let, me, uh, let me fix this. Dun, dun, dun. Project 42, I had said, right? Or problem 42. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 40. Problem 42, okay, so that one. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, where's my pencil? It's over here. It went to the other one. Um, not this one. Oh no, I did. I did. It's a coded triangle, right? Forty-two. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it says the nth term sequence of triangle numbers is given by T n equals to half n multiplied by n plus 1. Okay. And you okay. those numbers, okay. Hmm. So the first 10 triangle numbers are by converting each, oh, this one had the, the text file. Huh. Never mind. I didn't want to use the text one. Let me find another one real quick. Okay. All right. Um. I mean, let's just do problem oh, number one. The first one they put number on. Number one. Okay. Let me bring that one up. Hopefully, it's not that hard. All right. 
So this one says, number one. If we list all natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of 3 or 5, we get 3, 5, 6, and 9. The sum of these multiples is 23. And the sum of all multiples of 3 below 5. Below, okay, so fi find the sum of all the multiples of 3 or 5 below 1,000. Oh, okay. crap. Okay. <laughs> All right. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> so, if we list all the natural numbers below 10 that are the multiple, <laughs> so natural numbers below 10 that are multiples 3, 5, 6, 9, the sum of these multiples. Oh, okay, so, oh, so, oh, okay, so, I mean, we, okay, huh, we could, we could make this one recursive, I think. You could. Mm, so, oh, uh, um, what, okay. Okay, so, oh. Mm. Mm, let me move this one around. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Oh no, why is it moving? It's moving everywhere. Um, so we could do that. Uh, mold. We're calling it mold. And then we're going to do num. So num, I'm guessing like, oh, let's see. So it says we can choose three or five, so just pick one. Okay, okay so let's choose. Um, oh, it just says three. I thought we could, we had to choose three. Oh, okay. Let's do five. Um, how do we do this? Um, so. So we put in like a thousand, we, and like, since I'm choosing five, we don't count that one, right? We don't count 1,000 as it's, as a multiple. Good question. So the, so, so the, the actual problem says they wanted to do three, three and five, but I think to make it simpler, since we only uh -huh. have about 15 minutes left, we'll just do three, because that's easier. Three, okay. Plus three? Yeah, so if we do three, right? So if we list all uh -huh. natural numbers below a given number that are multiples of three, and then we add that up. Uh huh. Okay. Um. Now the question is can you use mod three to figure out if they're multiples of three? Yeah, we could use mod three. So, I mean, that would probably just be like, I'm trying to figure out the base case. So in this case, we're just going to add up all the ones that are multiples of 3, right? So 3, 6, 9, 12. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out the, it, the, the if statement, I guess. Like, if it's this or number, then you know what I mean? Right, so you would so so let's say someone gives you a hundred, uh huh. Right, you would start at 
zero or, or one, and then stop when it reaches 100. Ah. Oh. Right, so whatever number you, is the upper bound, you could have the first statement be, if it's upper bound, then stop. So it's non... I was thinking of like having the base case if num equals equals um, equals equals like zero, then just return a zero. Okay, so you're thinking going backwards from starting number down to zero. That works too. I don't know. That's how I was thinking of doing it. Okay. Or, yep, that works. Okay, let's see how it, it ends up playing. If num equals equal zero, I'll just return zero. I'll if um, or maybe we could. Okay, never mind. I'm changing my mind. It's okay. It's natural. I do it all the time, every day. <laughs> <laughs> I start and go, oh, actually, I changed my mind. And then five minutes later, I changed my mind again. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of like, uh, or should I do it to you? No, I'm sticking with you. Okay. Yeah, usually when I get in, into a uh, decision roadblock of like I don't know which one I'll just actually write something and yeah. then and I'll test it and then that'll tell me pretty quickly if that's a good way to do it or not <laughs> so elif what is the elif statement that's what I don't know okay so elif. it has to be a multiple of three so elif. how would you test oh, yeah. for that ah. elif num module oh, three if um, module 3 equals equals 0, then, oh wait, don't we need like, how are we going to keep track of the song? Good question. Could we do two functions and then call that function? Well. Wow. That is a great question. There's many ways to do it. One way would be to pass in the current number and then the running total. That's one way. Oh, we could do that too. Yep. The other way would be to have multiple functions. Uh, another way is to have a global variable that keeps track of the total. So there's a lot of different ways. So, like, if we were to use, like, a variable, um, where would we put in the variable? Well, so, it depends on what kind it is. If it's a global variable, um, you should be able to use it, but if it's a variable that you've defined within a function, then you have to pass it somehow. Um. Does that make sense? So global variable, yeah. I never, I don't know what a global variable oh, okay. is. So let me explain that. So a variable can can um can be just inside a function, and what that uh -huh. means is, when other functions call it, it has no idea what's declared inside of it. Right? It okay. just it just knows like I'm calling this function, and I don't care what's inside. That's your business. Uh -huh. A global variable is something that other functions can all see and they can modify and they can change. Uh huh. So it's something that's outside of a function. Outside of a function. Oh, okay. So outside. I've never used one. Um. So I'll try that. Okay. Um, and we can just. Put it at the top. Usually is where people put it. 
total. And then do we mark it at like zero? Yes, yep, you would start it at zero. So then we can call it in the function, right? Correct, yep, because it's, it's a global, so it's visible. Total equals total plus zero. What the heck? Um, total, total, I mean, not total, total plus and then, then we do num minus one, wait, up, uh, um, now, delete, and we do no equals my bad if this is so bad. <laughs> no equals num minus one. Yep, that looks right. And then we turn um I will turn what is it? Malt no. Whoa. Yep. No. Oh, and then we could do an elif. And then ma num modulo three does not equal zero. Then we just do no equal num one. Num minus one. Yep. And then return. Um. Mold. No. Okay. Yep. I don't know if this is kind of messy, but hopefully you guys understand what I'm writing. <laughs> um, give it a try. So let's give it a try. I'm gonna stop sharing. No. Can you guys see my computer? All right, here we go. Mm. There we you go. guys can see my computer? Yep, I can see it. Okay. Um, that num num equal zero zero return to zero Alice num modulo three equal zero two. oh wait I put it I forgot to put in the oh equal so total equal, what is it? Total plus num. Yep. Mm -hmm. No. Equal. Num. One. Return. Alt. No. Alice. One. Um, module. Where's module? Module three does not equal. Oh, where's the where's it? Mm. Oh. Um. Num minus one return no oh, no no I'm just gonna quickly put in some print statement so we see if anything's happening. Sounds good. Um, mm,
Okay. And then you should probably print the total if you want to. Huh? Oh, yeah. Should I print it? You can do where? It in... Just print it. Print it right here? You could print it in the, the final one with num equals zero, right? That's probably the easiest way. Okay. Oh. And. Um, what is the example? They said. Let's try and do just 10. Okay. Right. Ouch. Alt. Um, 10. Uh, oh, there's an error somewhere. Okay. So, oh, okay. It's because we have the variable outside. Uh -huh. Instead. Okay. So, do we? Yep, so I forget how to declare a global in Python. Let me think, yeah. Because I've never heard of a, a global in Python. <laughs> Maybe, um, let's see. Let's see if anything happens. All right, let me look it up real quick. Uh, let's see. Uh. Let's watch on. Okay. I feel like we could create a two functions, but if we're out of time, um, one that keeps track of the total, and yep. then one that keeps track of like whether or not whether or not. Um, yep, that's the easy way. You can change the function to num and then total, and then that way, you yeah, can just pass it along. But we're out of time, so. <laughs> okay, well, you can try it uh, this weekend and see if that works for you. Sounds yeah. Sounds good. Good job. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay. And then, so now do we just...